In this video, we're going to do some questions about functions, so let's dive right into it. First question asks, are the following functions injective, and what is the range? So remember, to, to prove that a function is injective, we suppose that f of x is equal to f of y, and we have to prove that x is equal to y. Our first function is from the reals to the reals, and f of x is equal to e to the x. So I have a feeling the exponential is injective so let's prove it. So first we assume that f of x is equal to f of y. So that's the same thing as saying that e to the x is equal to e to the y. Now we can take the natural log of both sides. And we know that the natural log and the exponential cancel. So we're left with x is equal to y. So yes, the function is injective. So what's the range of the function? Well. We know that e to the x grows infinitely large as x gets larger, so it's going to go to positive infinity. And what's the smallest value that you can get from e to the x? Well, the smaller x you put in, the closer and closer it gets to zero, but it never quite touches zero. So our range is going to be from zero to positive infinity, uninclusive. Okay, so question B, g from the integers to the integers where g of x is equal to x cubed minus x. I see this x cubed here, I see a minus x, and I also notice that this could be factored into x, x minus one, x plus one, so I'm feeling like maybe these aren't going to be injective. Maybe we can find two values that are equal to each other in fact, when I see here, I'm, uh, when I factor this, it's kind of telling me to look at the values of 0, 1, and negative 1. So we just have to show that two of these are equal, and then we'll know it's not injective. So let's take a look here. Um, let's take a look at g of 0, and let's take a look at g of 1. So g of 0 is going to be 0 cubed minus 0, and that's equal to 0. And g of 1 is going to be 1 cubed minus 1, which is equal to 0. So we know that g of 0 and g of 1 are equal to each other. Therefore, we have two elements in the domain mapping to the same element in the codomain. Therefore, it is not injective. Okay, and you can also check here g of negative 1, which would end up being negative 1 minus negative 1, which also equals 0. So we can see that there's actually three elements in the domain that map to the same element in the codomain. So what's the range of this? Well, we're in integers, so we can't use an interval. Therefore, our best bet is to use set notation. So our range is going to be the set of n cubed minus n, such that n is an integer. And this will produce all of the outputs. I know it's kind of cheating because you see, wait, that's the function right there, but this is the range. This is the best description of the range you can give. Okay, so that's the first question. The second question, uh, I want to give an example of a function f from a to b, and I want to give two subsets of a, a1 and a2, where f of a1 intersection a2 is not equal to f of a1 intersection f of a2. So what I mean here is if I take the intersection of the two subsets, it gives a different set of values than if I take uh, the function in each of the subsets individually and then take their corresponding values and take the intersection. So a nice way we can do this is we can say, OK, um, Let's let a equal two elements, and we're just going to put one element in each subset. So let's say a equals one and two. We're going to say that a1 is equal to the set containing one, and a2 is equal to the set containing two. So the nice thing about this is that um, f of the intersection of a1 and a2 is going to be the empty set. So this is f of the empty set. And when we put the empty set into a function, what do we get out? Well, we get the empty set back. So 
Now, we also need to figure out what f of a1 and f of a2 are. So we need our codomain b. And what would be nice is if we could get 1 and 2 to map to the same thing. So we're going to say that b is just 0. OK, and we're going to define that f of a1 is, so I, I, might, uh, I might define this a little bit more clearly on the right here. So we're going to say that f of 1 is equal to 3, and f of 2 is equal to 3. So f of 1 is equal to 3, f of 2 is equal to 3. So when I put f of a1 in, we're going to get the set containing 3 back. And then when I put f of a2 in, we're also going to get the set of 3 back. So this means that f of a1 intersection f of a2 is going to be the same thing as the set containing 3, intersection the set containing 3, which is just the set containing 3. So we've defined a function, a domain, a codomain, and two subsets such that the f of the intersection of a1 and a2 is not equal to f of a1 intersection f of a2. So that was more of a tricky theoretical question and the best thing you can do is do very, very simple sets, very, very simple functions. Uh, don't be thinking of a formula like, uh, can I think of an x cubed? Does it work with x squared? You don't need to worry about that. Work with a couple elements and make them do what you want them to do if you can and do it as simply as possible. Because if I used more than two elements in the domain and one element in the codomain, things might have gotten very tricky. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them the best that I can.